Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Welcome to our Trinity Baptist Church worship services. We're glad that you're here. We're happy to have you on the radio and also on the internet. We're happy to have each one of you. Let's praise the Lord together.
I be lifted up, I will draw all unto me. Our first group of scriptures this morning as we welcome our radio listeners and our internet viewers, we ask that God will continue to richly bless you and encourage you to continue to watch Trinity Baptist Church. Our first group of scriptures coming from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 14, 15, 18, 19, tw uh, 21, and 23. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient towards all men, see that none render evil for evil unto any man but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. 18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 19, quench not the spirit. And 23, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Savior, we come to say thank you. We come in the name that is above every name, who is Jesus Christ, the righteous, the perfect, the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end, the bread of life, eternal life our hope of salvation, our security in the present and in the future. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for sending your Holy Spirit who stands with us, who stands beside us and goes with us to encourage us and to guide us. We invite you, Holy Spirit, into this service that you would touch every man, woman, boy, and girl listening here in the sanctuary and on the radio and the internet. May they experience the witness and power and presence of your holy presence and loving kindness. We thank you, Lord, that we can call on your name and know that you hear us, that we can trust in you and never doubt, that we can stand upon your promises. We thank you that all your promises are yea and amen and there is no shadow or turning. Thank you for our Trinity family. Thank you for those who've gone before us and showed us the way and showed us a good Christian example. For over 102 years, we have been here in this community serving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so we thank you, Lord, that you're not finished with us yet. For we ask you, Lord, to strike the fires in our bosom that we may be on fire and that we may stand strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We ask your Holy Spirit to convict us and to convert us and to empower us to continue to stand strong and be a living witness for the risen Savior. We thank you for our auxiliaries here of our church, Trinity Baptist Church, and each those who are in leadership, we pray for each one, as your word says, to pray for all men, even for kings. So we pray for them that you may touch their heart and, if necessary, change their hearts. That you may touch their lives, that you may even transform their lives, that you may guide them and direct them. We pray, Lord, for our leadership here in the city of Los Angeles, and we pray for those who need to make the right decision, not according to what is, but according to thy will. We pray for the leadership of the United States of America and for our president and vice president and all of those in the house that you would give leadership and guidance to them according to your will and not man's will. For we walk by faith and not by sight. For our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame or holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock we stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. We thank you for our musician. We thank you for our praise team and their sacrifice and love. 
and being here so consistently. God bless and God keep you. Through Christ our Lord and Savior, we ask all and for his sake. Amen. Christ Jesus resurrected 
ascended, sitting on the right hand of the Father, Jesus Christ. I believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Jesus, the resurrection. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Trio, and a prolific praise our Father. God bless you. Thank you for your efforts and your service. May God continually fill you and use you. Our second reading comes from the epistle that Paul writes to the Church of Colossae. Colossians chapter 3. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. The New King James Version. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things down here. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, mortify, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, lustful and youthful passions, wicked and evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand eternally. Let us pray. My Heavenly Father, I am your child. For I believe in my heart that Jesus has been raised from the dead and now is on the right hand with you, making intercession for believers. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. Jesus, you said how much more Shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So I ask you now, Father, in the name of Jesus, to fill those present here in the sanctuary. Fill those who are watching virtually. Fill those who are hearing your word with your Holy Spirit. By faith, we now step into that fullness and thank you for this day. Father, we love you and thank you that our names are imprinted in the palm of your hand, that you love us unconditionally and nothing can ever separate us from your love. May we believe more than ever before where our beliefs will turn into conviction. May we believe more how wide and how deep and how long is your love. Moment by moment, daily, we live out of that love by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit within. For greater are you who lives in us than those who do not. So Father, we thank you that you have empowered us and are calling us and chosen and choosing us to be living testimonies, living emojis as it is, oh God, that we will represent you 
here on earth. When you are lifted up, Jesus, all men will be drawn toward you. So God, we, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for Jesus whom you raised. We thank you for the new life in Christ that we have and are living by faith. Old things have passed away and are passing away and you are recreating us in you and we thank you. So Lord, continue to renew, continue to refresh, continue to restore us and empower us to stand and walk in the light as he is in the light. I am with you. I am with us. I am with my people. You continually shout in my soul. So Lord, may your spirit comfort the family and that daughter who you sent angels into the room and escorted their father into heaven. Thank you for allowing your servant the privilege to be there in that room. Comfort those who are bereaved. Comfort those who are grieving. Strengthen the feeble hands and Strengthen the knees and move as you always do. Not that I am telling you what to do, but I pray, oh God, that we are aligning ourselves and listening to you. So, Father, we ask in the powerful and mighty name of your Son, Christ Jesus our Lord, that you will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. You said in your word, those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we wait. We expect and we believe that great things are happening and will happen. We will wait for great things will happen. We will wait and hope. For in Christ in you is the hope of glory. So we wait and we expect and we hope. We wait and we hope and we expect. We wait and we expect and we hope. And we wait and we expect and we hope. And we wait, we walk, expect, and we hope. And praise you in the spirit of worship and in truth and we thank you for this awesome privilege to be in your house on this day in the land of the living today my people when you hear my voice do not harden your hearts or your head come forth in the name of jesus for your salvation draws near hear the word of the lord repent repent Repent. Unto you, O oh God, we give you the praise and the honor and the glory, and we worship you. Come now, even Lord Jesus, even now. Come, Lord Jesus.
Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment.
want to share with you from the book of Philippians. Philippians, the fourth chapter. I'm going to read verse 5. I'm reading it from the King James Version. And it reads, Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. So I want to share with you today uh, from this subject, the mastery of life. The mastery of life. How to master life. The mastery of life according to the scriptures. And we're going to look at it from this fourth verse in Philippians, fourth chapter in Philippians, the fifth verse. Let your moderation be known to all men, to all people. The Lord is at hand. The Apostle Paul is writing this wonderful chapter in Philippians. It is one of my favorite chapters to read. Uh, if you ever want to get your thinking right, want to get your mind, heart, and spirit in the right place, uh, I recommend you read Philippians, and particularly this fourth chapter. Uh, Paul is sharing some things uh, with us, and I'm going to focus in on this fifth verse, but there's some excellent, beautiful passages there. Uh, he talks about, uh, think on these things, whatever's lovely, whatever's true, whatever's honest, whatever's of good report, whatever is praiseworthy. He tells us to think on these things. And as he is moving toward those writings, he gives us this nugget uh, that we're going to lift up today, and that is, let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. I want to try to lift up three things out of this text. Uh, the first thing is that uh, moderation ought to be a part of every Christian's life. Uh, we ought to live moderately. Uh, when you read uh, the text and read some of the commentaries, Matthew Henry and uh, Charles Spurgeon and other commentators that uh, speak of this text, uh, they tell you that uh, we are believers, Christians, are not at home in this world. And so the way we behave in this world, uh, we should behave as if though we were at uh, someone's home visiting. We are guests. And if you are a guest uh, someplace, uh, you ought not to eat uh, all the hostess food. You, you, they, when they tell you to make yourself at home, they don't mean empty out the house. You ought to, you ought to have what this scripture says here, some moderation. And that's what Paul's saying. We are just guests here on this earth. This is not our home. And when we get to heaven, it's going to be a feast. We're always talking about being at the welcome table, and you're at home so you can eat all you want and do, do whatever else you want because you're at home. But when you're a guest someplace, there's a certain standard of behavior that we should uh, operate in. And Paul is saying, we're guests on this earth. This is not our home. And so all that we do ought to be in moderation. Christians ought to live in moderation. So when we uh, have our uh, different... Uh, celebrations, whether it be the 4th of July or any other holiday. We've got Labor Day coming up next month. What, whatever the holiday is, we ought to exercise it in moderation because this is not our home. And so Paul is giving us this Christian clue that it is important for us uh, to exercise moderation. Now, Carl Barth, who was a wonderful uh, theologian, he says in his book, God's Search for Man, he says that Actually, uh, sanctification is moderation lived out on a daily basis. So we are, we are called to live sanctified lives. And what, what sanctification is, according to Carl Barth, it is simply living moderately. It is uh, doing all things, as Apostle Paul says, in moderation. Th th that's a sanctified life, a life that uh, is set apart for, for God's honor is one that does all things in moderation. E even our anger, even when we're upset, it, 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 there ought to be some moderation. There ought to be some, uh, is, is God pleased with my behavior? Everything we do ought to be pleasing to our God. And so we ought to do all things in moderation. And moderation is also uh, recognizes that that means that we are unselfish. We're not looking out just for ourselves. Uh, moderation has an unselfishness about it. 
a sanctification has an unselfishness about it. And so God calls us to moderation. Uh, one writer says moderation is meekness under provocation. I mean, you're, you, you're being provoked, but you respond in meekness, even when you're provoked. That's moderation. We are to, and sometimes we're provoked from ourselves. Uh, when when I'm, uh, I have some chocolate, I get provoked because I, I want more. The provocation is to get more. I had just a little slither of chocolate uh, cupcake yesterday, and then after I ate that, I said, well, you know, it, it needs something to wash it down. So I had to get a little slither of uh, chocolate ice cream. And then I realized when I opened up to get the ice cream that I had some chocolate milk in there. So you go from the chocolate cake to the chocolate ice cream to the chocolate milk. And then I said, well, look, this, I, I, I need to stop. I'm just trying to live moderately. Uh, thankfully, uh, I got some help because we were all out of everything else anyway. So it, it is you and I being recognizing that God calls us in every aspect of our life to live moderately. Uh, so the text says it just plainly, let your moderation be known to all. Now, once you are living moderately, uh, your next job, your next responsibility, is the second thing you gotta do, is make it known. Uh, you, you, you try to teach it to others, you try to demonstrate it to others, you try to let others know this is just a good way to live. Uh, it, it, it is a, a sharing of the gospel, a sharing the good news. When you have some good news, you ought to be willing to share it. So Paul says, let it be known. Let it be known that this, this really is the right way to do things. This is the healthy way to do things. This is the way that's going to help you uh, be uh, in the right relationship with God and in the right relationship with yourself. Because when you are, when you are at dis-ease, we call it disease, when your body is in disharmony, it doesn't function the way it ought to. And so we need to make sure we are in harmony with ourselves. We are at ease instead of being at dis-ease. We bring dis-ease upon ourselves. We bring disharmony upon ourselves uh, when we don't operate in moderation. Because moderation, uh, it is at the bedrock of unselfishness. And so we don't become selfish, we become unselfish. Uh, some, some versions uh, translated, in fact, the New International Version says, uh, let your gentleness be known. Uh, other versions say your gentle attitude. Uh, the uh, King James Version says uh, the, uh, your moderation, but the other versions, they say your forbearance. And so there, there, there's this idea that we are to uh, put some limitations on ourselves. We, we have liberty, and Paul talks about our liberty, but then he says, but the liberty needs to be tempered with limitations. We, 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 we ought to reduce ourselves. We ought to uh, have some restraint among ourselves. Your moderation be known to all men. Well, once he talks about uh, making this known, he's actually sharing with us our responsibility to preach and to teach. And that's not just for a pastor, that's for everybody. We, we have a responsibility to preach and to teach, to let people know, let your friends know, that your family know, that your neighbors know, that, that the right way to do things is in moderation. That, that's, that's sharing the good news without, without uh, being too preacher-like. It's just, just sharing the good news, that, that, that what you do is done in moderation. And he says, and the best way to do that, the best way to make it known is not using words. If you have to say it, if you have to use words, uh, I think it was Augustine that said, uh, words ought to be your last resort. It ought to be demonstrated in your life. It, it ought to be a part of uh, how people see you operate. I, I, I love uh, eating chocolate, but I, I do it in moderation. I, I have certain days uh, that I just won't eat it at all. In fact, most days I don't eat it at all. Uh, and then when I do eat it, I make sure that I, I have, uh, usually have a witness. Because if I don't have somebody keeping me accountable, if I'm gonna keep myself accountable, I almost always will say one more. 
But when I got my accountability partner, uh, that accountability partner, sometimes I refer to her as the chocolate police. Uh, uh, they, they make sure that, that you do what you said you were going to do. And, th and that's what the scripture really is teaching us. It is for you and I to do what we say we're going to do. When we say that we're Christian, when we say we've been saved by grace, when we say that we're part of the family of God, then God said, then do what you say you're going to do. If you're going to be a child of God, then that's what you need to be doing. That's, not, that's just not a title. That's something that we do. Uh, we had a song that says, this is what I do. It, it, it's just something that an individual is called to do. We, we're called to, to live moderately. Well, that it goes uh, not only in what we eat, uh, what we drink, uh, uh, how much we eat or drink, but it also goes into uh, the clothes that we wear. Uh, we ought to uh, dress moderately. We ought to uh, dress in a way that, that honors our Christ. Now, I know there's appropriate uh, beach wear if you are on the beach, uh, but if, if you're not on the beach, and even on the beach, I think there ought to be some but uh, that's another story. But, but let's, let's, let's just uh, say, as, as believers, let's just be conscious of the fact that we are to live moderately. In all that we do, we are to live moderately. Well, Paul says this, uh, be, be moderate, and then he says, and then make that known. Make sure you preach it, teach it. Uh, uh, make sure you demonstrate that with your life. But then the last thing is, uh, he says these words, the Lord is at hand. When Paul says the Lord is at hand, uh, he has uh, several references that he's making. Uh, one, one writer says that uh, Paul uses this phrase as a kind of a hallelujah. It is, uh, it is uh, in the Old Testament when they would say hallelujah, it was to say praise the Lord. It was to say uh, give honor and greatness to the name of God. Well, when Paul says the Lord is at hand, he is saying to you and I to give honor and greatness to the name of God. It is, it is Paul's hallelujah statement. It is you and I recognizing that as the, as the disciples in the first century had Jesus at hand, we in this 21st century, we also have Jesus at hand. He is as near to us as he was to Peter, Paul, and James. This, this Christ, he, he's not some far distant away where he can't get access to us and we can't get access to him. He is at hand. Paul says it clearly to us, the Lord is at hand. Uh, you, you don't have to worry about whether he can get here. He's already here. You don't have to worry about, uh, is he going to be late? He's never late. He's always right on time. The Lord is at hand. Not the Lord will be at hand. Not the Lord may be at hand. Not the Lord can be at hand. The, lo the Lord is. Our God is never spoken of in the past tense or in the future tense. God always is. The Lord is at hand. Uh, that becomes a, a sense of, of uh, protection for us. That becomes a sense of, of, of glory for us. It becomes a sense of, of hallelujah for us because our God is at hand. Uh, it, it lets us recognize that if God allows something to, to happen in our lives, he has a reason and a purpose for it. He's not going to allow anything to come in our lives that's not going to ultimately and make sure you underline that word ultimately, this is not going to ultimately be for our good because we serve a good God. And God is good all the time. There are no certain times when God's not good. He's good all the time. And it's because God is good all the time, he's going to do good by us. He's going to do good by me. He's going to do good by you. Our God is good. And what God asks of us is that we would just live moderately and recognize that when we're living, we're living in such a way that we recognize God is at hand. I always had a, a deep respect 
uh, for my uh, parents and, and grandparents. And uh, even when I, I went through this period, I told you before, when I would curse a lot, cursing bad, I never would curse around my parents. And I would always make sure that my grandparents were not around. Now I had some friends, uh, some of my friends, uh, all of which now that I think about, all of them are dead now. And part of, I think, they gone because they would curse in front of their parents. And I would say to them, man, don't, don't do that. Your, your mother's right there. Don't say that in your mother is right here. She can hear, she's right at the table where we're at. She hears us. And even as I was saying that, he cursed some more. He never made it out of his teen years. And part of that was because he, 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 the, the Bible says whether your mother or father are honoring God or not, it tells you to honor them. It doesn't say honor good mothers or good fathers. It just says honor your mother and father, whether they're good or not good. And when you do that, God then will bless and honor you. It's not about whether they deserve it. It's about God said it, and so we're supposed to do it. Bring, bring honor because God said it. But then Paul is teaching us, bring moderation because God said it. Not, not because it's what my desire is, not because it's going to, uh, if I eat moderately, it'll help me have a good figure, although I happen to have that, but it just, it just happens that, that, that was a joke, y'all. Uh, uh, it was because God said it. That's why we do it. We do it because the Lord is at hand. I recognize when I speak words now, I recognize that God is present when I speak. If I speak bad words, God's present when I speak those bad words. That's why I don't say bad words anymore. But when I speak good words, I recognize God is present and God is pleased with my words. I hope and pray that when you speak, that God would be pleased with your words. It doesn't matter what you're speaking about. You can be speaking about sports. You can be speaking about the Olympics. What, whatever you're speaking about, uh, what, it's about this pandemic. Whatever you speak about, make sure God is pleased with your words. Because there's a reward for everybody who pleases the Lord. And Paul says, uh, when he says the Lord is at hand, he also wants us to know there's also judgment for everybody that displeases the Lord. There's, there's heaven and there's hell. There's, there's rewards and there's judgment. And God will bless everybody that honors his name and he's going to judge everybody that dishonors his name. His name is that important that if you and I decide we're going to dishonor that name, then God said, I'm going to dishonor you. If, if, if we're going to dishonor Jesus the Christ who died for our sin, then now God the Father said, I'm going to dishonor you for dishonoring my son. But if we bless the name of Jesus Christ, because we bless his son, God then says, I'm going to bless you. Because you honor his son, God says, I'm going to honor you. If you lift up his son, God says, I'll lift you up. We master life through moderation, living out the words that God has taught. The Lord is at hand. Will you bow your head with me as we pray? Gracious God, we do thank you that you are at hand. We thank you that you're right here right now. We thank you that you're all over the world at the same time. Pray that you would be in every home. Pray that you would be in every car, every vehicle, every truck, uh, van, wherever people are. We pray that your presence would be there. Smile upon each one of us. Forgive, forgive me and forgive my brother and sister. Forgive us of our sin and our shortcomings. Help us to live as the scripture teaches. The Lord is present with us right now. The Lord is at hand. Let us call on you. Let us receive you. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for being here with us. Will you stand with me? We're going to offer the benediction.
And uh, just as we offer the benediction, I want to have a special uh, prayer for the Reverend Alexander Watson. I was talking with him last night. He, uh, his roommate died last night, and we were sorry, and we had prayer. And I said to him, uh, they hadn't gotten the body yet, and we wasn't sure when. And I said to him, man, it's going to be hard to sleep with a dead body right there in the same apartment. Uh, I said, I don't know if I, I, I wouldn't, I'm not sure I would go to sleep that night. Then we talked about the resurrection. <laughs> he, said, <laughs> he said, if that man get up. <laughs> but, so we had a laugh about that and prayed. And then the, the ironic thing is, he got here on time. I'm the one that got was late. I'm, I was thinking about that all night long, Reverend. I couldn't, I couldn't go to sleep. I said, what, you know, I don't know what was, I just couldn't sleep. I, I, probably around four o'clock this morning, I finally dropped off to sleep. Then couldn't hardly get up. Uh, oh my goodness, he got up before and I went to sleep before. But we are, are thankful for you, Reverend Alex, and we're asking God's continued blessings upon you. Let us receive now the benediction. Now unto him does David keep us from falling. The great shepherd of the sheep, the firstborn from the dead, the blood of the everlasting covenant, even our Savior, Jesus our Christ, to him be dominion, majesty, grace, and power, now, henceforth, and forever. Let us all say amen. God bless you all. Thank you for being here today. I remember to pray for Reverend Martin. He'll be bringing the word uh, next, next Sunday. And the Sunday after that, Reverend Alex.
promised, Jesus promised, Jesus promised, Jesus promised, Jesus promised, He'll take care of me. Jesus promised, Jesus promised, Jesus promised, he'll take